good evening. This video is a long time coming. This video is something that I've been thinking a lot about for a very long time. How to approach it, what to reference. And also let me get something clear right out of the way. I do not think of the Bible as myth or legend. I think of it as truth. I am a religious person. I consider myself a Christian. I just don't talk about it much. I like to respect all religions and all viewpoints and science at the same time. But what I personally believe is somewhat irrelevant. When you look at the evidence that we find in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, about how we were created and how we came about. And when we apply this to Bigfoot, and also to why the government cover up and a lot of other reasons, uh, it's quite striking, in my opinion. Now, you're free to believe whatever you want. Uh, that's how this country works. That's how the world works. But in my own thinking and in my own religious consciousness expanding, in my own interpretations, spending a lot of time, especially in the early parts of the Bible, when it comes to Genesis and it talks about the flood and the Nephilim, trying to think where Bigfoot fits in. Now, there's a lot of people who just straight up say that Bigfoot is the Nephilim. And I don't think that that's necessarily a wrong answer, but I think it's kind of an incomplete answer. Um, I don't think it would be fair. It's kind of like saying, oh, bears are carnivores. It's like, well, they eat a lot of other stuff too. And it's like, I think there's a lot of other stuff going on. And these are just kind of my guesses, interpretations, things that I've looked at. And things that have crossed my mind, reading the work of others, um, consulting people in my family and in my circle who are also really religious, and kind of reaching out there. And my first inclination is that some of this applies to Dogman too, but I think I might make a whole other video about this Dogman phenomenon and other strange creatures people are seeing in the woods. Um, I think they might all have a connection here, but I think at the very core... I think Sasquatch is a very old species. I think it goes back a long time. And I think it can either go two ways. as one of the original inhabitants of the Earth um, in some kind of a form. Uh, you know, maybe some kind of a pre-human, like we have documented through our fossil record if you want to get in science. There are many creatures, the Australopithecines, all through the Homo family, that um, aren't quite human, but they are very close. And you look at the great ape species. And when we look at the Bible and it talks about the Nephilim, the fallen angels, the ones that came down from heaven, betrayed God, and they fell upon the earth and they found the uh, daughters of men to be beautiful and then they procreated with them. And then in turn, these became the giants, like David and Goliath type giants. Um, these were kind of your... Um, very dark, bad people. These were the great kings, good and bad, but, you know, giant people, superhuman people, the fallen angels, um, basically kind of corrupting what man was in the vision of God. And I think that might be, just a guess, a secret to what Sasquatch might be. And why there's a government cover-up, why there's such a stigma at very official levels not to cover this, why there are some of the DNA studies out there that say that Sasquatch is part human or mostly human and part something else. And some of the other government cover-ups and kill teams and things that have been sent out to eliminate these creatures describe their being purebloods and corrupted. Um, and we got to look back to the original tamperers of the genetic code of this earth. And, you know, you, you look back and if you, pick, if, you if, if you took Goliath, like in this picture here, and covered him with hair, boy, that would be a very, you know, very close representation of Sasquatch. But a lot of the giants in the Nephilim, which why when I say people think Sasquatch is the Nephilim or the Raphaim, I don't necessarily think that that's a cut and dry answer. I think they have some of the Nephilim blood, some of the fallen angel blood in them, but I think they're more engineered by these fallen angels. I think they may be more created, tampered with, bastardized, crossbred. For what purposes? As guardians, as spies? I don't know. If there's some kind of Anunnaki, the Watchers, you want to get into that kind of stuff. But I think that there is a core belief and a core structure to why Sasquatch isn't necessarily... Um, recognized by science and why there is such a cover-up and why these creatures seem to have such supernatural abilities. 
Now here you have a picture of one of the oldest tales of Gilgamesh. Now there's Gilgamesh right there. And uh, you can see compared to regular sized humans how big he is and how large he is. And then there's other pictures that are going to come up here that show him um, holding a lion like it would like it's a house cat. And it says right in the Bible that the offspring of the fallen angels and men the Nephilim were great men of renown, giant tyrants, good, evil, all that kind of stuff. Now here's now here's the picture of him holding a lion like a house cat. That's absolutely huge. And we look all through history. If you look at Anubis, which is looks like a dog man, and you look like all through ancient Egypt, I think it was Horus that looked like a the head of a man or the, the head of a hawk with the body of a man. And you look at the Sphinx and Griffins and stories about dragons and serpents and sea monsters, and then you look at our modern day cryptozoology, all the strange cryptids that, that, that are out there. And uh, by the way, here's a picture of Gilgamesh on the right and Enkidu, because Gilgamesh was from the city. He was the shining, the best a man could be beyond a man, a shining king. And then Enkidu who became his friend after a great battle was described as this great hairy beast of the woods who was friends of animals could talk with animals covered in hair and had horns on his head sometimes depicted as and was this great wild man who was about roughly the same size as Gilgamesh 8, 9, 10, 12 feet tall but covered in hair that sounds a lot like a Bigfoot to me or at the very least some kind of a descendant of it and I think in certain Bigfoot populations all across the United States all across the world I think these are descendants I think what you know science would call them like a hominid species there's another picture of Inkadu right there fighting fighting a half-breed serpent lion and I think it's really fascinating how some of them you know you can go look at a Yeti you can go look at a Yowie a Yaren all across the world this phenomenon and there are regional differences, but you're generally describing a large, upright, walking hominid creature that can seemingly vanish, sometimes depicted as red eyes, um, sometimes attributed to supernatural things, sometimes unmitigated fear, something otherworldly connected to a very physical being. And I think when you talk about fallen angels, the Nephilim, the Anunnaki, the Watchers, whatever great influence had over mankind... Um, thousands and thousands of years ago uh, I, I think that it's a good um, see here's another picture of Gilgamesh with a lion if you want to get a perspective of how big these things are in literature so I think it's quite a possibility that there's something in a Sasquatch that goes back to biblical days it's very fascinating to me that modern science um you know the way society especially in the last couple hundred years we've pushed aside god it's a creation myth it's nothing but morals and manners pay no attention to the bible it was all metaphor there was no such thing as giants there were no such thing as god and creation and all that kind of stuff and we came through millions of years of evolution and we push out god but at the same time we have undiscovered ape species that literally millions of people all across the world see all the time not to mention these other creatures something that would be called paranormal and science really wants to push this aside and ignore it kind of like the whole alien thing with the government you know i mean more people believe in aliens than they do you know um than than pay taxes in the united states it's like you know 50 60 70 percent of people every year that number goes up especially with some of the great documentaries that are out there you know like 20 years ago you said area 51 and a few people heard of it now it's in our lexicon now little green men and aliens and all that kind of stuff it's um people think it's real and it's no doubt that subliminally hollywood they're trying to show us bigfoot monsters horror paranormal type stuff um so we get used to it and we're kind of inoculated to it but at the same time modern science keeps pushing it aside and it's like what are they hiding and for me, when we look at the, the four basic types of Sasquatch people were port in North America, a big giant one that looks like a uh, uh, that looks like a gorilla, a smaller one that's still huge at seven eight foot tall that looks like a big chimpanzee and very excitable like a chimpanzee, intelligent like a chimpanzee. You get a third type that has a snout like a baboon with a very bad temper, 
completely carnivorous. You know, the gugwe species that people report, they're very rare, but people report them. And then you have another type that may be like a like a stone giant, like a genosqua, a very aggressive, very human-like that bears um, striking resemblance to things that go through our fossil record. And it was like, how much tampering by ancient civilizations, how much tampering by these fallen angels, how much tampering by what you might want to call an alien or a watchers or some other outside influence? You know, who knows what the Atlanteans and some of these really fabled ancient civilizations were up to that were supposedly very advanced what type of technology they had, what type of magic that they had, what type of, you know, because basically everything is magic until it can be explained scientifically. And who knows what they were able to create, and who knows what our government created, who knows, um, you know, all those stories about all the giant bones that are always covered up by the, by the government and hidden. And I think this very much knocks on the door of what Sasquatch is. They are something... And I know a lot of you guys are going to be, well, this was a long video to say something I already knew, but it's pretty much the point now in my research, spending many hundreds of hours reading the Bible, literature, thinking hard, talking to other people, researching this stuff, that I don't think that they're the out-and-out -out Nephilim. I do think that at their core, they have a natural species in men, as in mankind, as we think of humans. And also, because, you know, 98% of your DNA is shared with a chimpanzee. So it would be very easy for something to be very ape-like and share a lot of DNA and similarities with a human, uh, but not be us. Things that could give them otherworldly abilities to shift in and out of dimensions, to move, to affect the vibrational frequencies, all sorts of really out there stuff. I mean, who knows? And it would be a really good reason for the government to want to study these things, capture these things, want to know how they work, keep it off the history books, because it might, in a sense, beyond the logging industry and people going missing in the woods, which I think, not all of them, but once in a while Sasquatch is a good suspect for that. Um, I think it all boils down to the big question that these things go back to something very ancient, something biblical, and they are, to quote some special forces people who have gone after these things, abominations. They are chimeras and I think there are ones that are purer than others and I think there are ones that are more corrupted than others you're going to look at a gugwe and tell me uh, a 9 10 foot tall completely yoked out ferocious baboon faced long live with long claws is something that nature came up with is something that God created I think they're abominations I think they're bastardizations of something that came through our creations and I think the Nephilim was a very good place to start and their offspring and other generations and that's kind of been my thinking of where Sasquatch is. I think it kind of explains a lot. I don't think scientifically we could ever explain a lot of the strange things and strange stories and phenomenon that's associated with Sasquatch and why the cover-up is. So these, these are just a few of my thoughts. I hope you really liked it. My YouTube channel is kind of winding down, as you guys can tell. I'll still, I'll still throw up a few videos and still do a few things, but YouTube basically doesn't like me and doesn't like the uh, Bigfoot community and paranormal communities that's fine I'm still going to produce produce content for my subscribers please make sure you do subscribe please make sure you do ring that notification bell I've got a lot of subscribers and fans that tell me that they were unsubscribed and they've had to resubscribe several times or they're not getting the notifications or they're leaving comments and the comments are disappearing or they're giving thumbs up but the numbers not changing very weird stuff and I gotta tell you it's not me it's part of the Google YouTube algorithm either they've lumped us in with categories that they don't like or there's something else going on but I'm gonna continue to make videos and pursue other things other places so stay safe in the woods and always look for the truth